This is John. Um, today we're going to be going over uh, Django authentication. And what I mean by authentication is we're going to be going over how to make a login and log out and all this kind of stuff for our Django project. Okay, so let's get started. So first, I'm going to just show you what we have so far. So python manage.py run server. And then boom. Um, this is what we have so far. We have a form that's like, like that. We have a title, context, after initial checklist and some basic hello world stuff and then the save button and stuff like that so we have a basic form working and we even have a check field um, we this is actually exclusively done in my lecture so if you want to know more about it come talk to me or go check out the Django documentation and yeah okay so let's get started with our Django authentication okay so before we begin uh, the thing about Django authentication is we're going to be using a Django Py we're going to be using a Python module. So we're going to be downloading a package from our pip. Okay, so so far, if you do pip freeze, oops, if you do pre pip freeze, it'll show you the list of stuff. Uh, currently, I have Django registration installed already because I was messing around with it. But you should not have this installed yet. You should only have Django. Django and wheel installed. So to install Django registration, all you have to do is pip install Django registration. And if you do that, it should install your Django registration. And to check, what you can do is pip do pip freeze, and it should tell you all the list of stuff available. Okay? And before we before we do that, let's actually uh, write a text file that will contain all the pip packages that we have installed in us. In our Django. To do that, you're gonna type pip install, oh no, pip freeze, and then dash r, and then requirements.txt. And you have to name it requirements with an s.txt because we're actually going to be using this file later on when we're uh, deploying it to heroku.com. And what I mean by heroku.com is that's the website where we will be publishing our Django application so this site is actually the site we are going to be using to deploy our application so make sure you spell it correctly uh, do so pip freeze dash r requirements dot text and then press enter oops oh no sorry don't do that never mind I, I, it's actually pip freeze and then uh, arrow sign like that and then requirements R e q u i r e m e n t s dot text. So yeah, make sure you put a this sign, not a dash r. That's actually later on. So make make sure you do the this sign and the requirements dot text and press enter. And then when you do that, you should now see requirements dot text popping up. And if you could do vim requirements dot text, you can actually see all the things that you have installed in your Django server. So that's it. Um, yeah. And one of the cool things about requirements dot text is let's say you want to install everything that's inside your requirements that text. To do that, you can just say install uh, require R -E -Q -U -I, requirements that text, and then if you do that, it will automatically install everything that's inside your requirements that text. So that's kind of a that's kind of a cool. Th oh, it's actually pip install. Yeah. Oops. No. Dash R. Yeah. So if you do that, it's, it will actually install all the things that are. Oh gosh. It's actually pip install. So, like, so if you do that, it will actually install everything that's inside your requirements.txt file. Okay. So now, okay, let me just delete this R. Okay. Oh, well, we'll delete this later. Okay. Anyways, um, so now we have all the stuff installed including our Django registration. But thing is, even though it is installed in our pip, our Django application does not know that we have this thing installed in our application. So let's go to our let's go to open our code and to tell Django that we have installed this Django registration, uh, we have to go to settings.py then scroll up. So open settings.py and scroll up all the way. And then go to here, and then this this one here is actually the one that we have named ourselves because we named it homepage. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna comment saying this is my app. And then underneath this, I'm actually gonna write a comment 
and hashtag for comment. Now I'm going to say external installed packages. Okay, and then underneath this, I'm going to type registration because that is basically the one that we have installed here. So Django registration is actually called registration in our thing. So make sure you do that. And th by typing this line right here, our Django now knows that we have this thing called registration installed in our application. Okay. So now, now that we've done that, we are going to go to our views.py. Oh, actually, let's go to urls.py. Um, so the thing about Django is that um, we're, Django now has to have a separate URL for our login and logout. So we're actually going to uh, have to make a URL that deals with login and deals with logout. And we also need a URL that deals with our homepage. So let's actually make a URL for our homepage first. Okay, I'm just going to copy this line here and then do that. And then instead of this dollar sign, I'm actually going to say home and with a slide right here. So what this means is that now I can just say home here. Oh, I have to first activate my server. Oh, I have to migrate first. Hold on, give me a second. Python manage.py make migrations. I gotta spell it correctly. In Python manage.py migrate. Python manage.py run server. And what that means is now if I go home, it also goes to home, which is exactly the same as that. And the reason why this works is because we have defined it home here. And so this basically is the actual URL input, and this is the location of our file directory for our views.py. And what this is, this is basically um, the name for your Jinja. So, what, so we're going to be going over that later, but whenever you're using Jinja, this is the name that it's going to be using. So there we go. Okay, so we have our home set up, and now let's set up our login. So to do, to do login, this is the line that you'll be typing. So URL is almost exactly the same as the previous one. So login dot, and then django.contrib.auth.views.login and then comma, and then I'm going to name this login also, okay? And then make sure you put a comma in the end. Actually, let me make this smaller, okay? And then you do URL, R, R, G. I'm going to copy this line. And then instead of login, I'm going to say log out. Log out. Log out. Okay, bam. So now you click save, and that should be it for our urls.py. So let's actually go check it out to see if it's working properly. Okay, so our home is working properly. Oh. So if you go to random URL, it will actually give you an error because that the reason is we have not defined it in our url.py. But if you go to your home URL, it will go to your home. But if you go to login, it will give you this error. And the reason is um, this location, uh, this one right here, is actually looking for a registration dot, um, is actually looking for our login.html. So Django expects us to create a template called login.html inside a registration folder, right, like here, okay? So now let's actually create a folder named registration inside a template folder and then create a login.html. Okay, so let's go to our templates, excuse me, and then create a new folder inside our templates. And then I'm going to name this R-E-G-I-S-T-R-A-T-I-O-N-S, -E registrations. I hope I spelled that correctly, R-E-G-I-S-T-R-A-T-I-O-S. Okay, cool. I'm going to name this registrations, and I'm going to double check if that's what it wants. Oh, no, it's without an S, okay? So make sure you erase the S. So I'm going to rename this, then delete the S, okay? So registration is inside our templates folder. And inside our registration, I'm going to create login.html. 
Now, just for the sake of it, let's just create a random. This is a login HTML header like that. See what happens. Okay, I'm gonna click save, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh this, and then bam, our login HTML is now working. Okay. So now we have a login HTML working. Um, let's see. But the thing is, I I kind of want to have a login um, thing directed towards my home.html. What I mean by that is, I want to have a, like a username or password input appearing in my home website homepage instead of having like a separate login HTML. So what I want my website to do is, whenever a Django wants to access this login site, I want it to redirect to my home URL okay so I want to have like a login uh, maybe like something here so let's make a redirect uh, HTML file instead of our header that we have created here okay so I'm going to delete this and I'm going to write a li line of HTML code that will redirect our thing to our home.html so follow this follow along so type meta HTTP and equiv refresh and then content c-o-n-t-e-n-t -E equals zero and then URL and let's see URL and then here I'm going to be using a Jinja and remember this is a Jinja and this is a mustache okay so this is a Jinja this is a mustache okay anyways so inside our Jinja I'm going to say home and make sure you put a single quotation here and the double quotation here because we're using a lot of quotation inside another quotation okay and then put a percent sign here and then I'm going to close this bracket with an HTML line like this okay I'm going to click save and let's hope that I've typed everything correctly and then let's go check out our login so hopefully this should redirect our login URL to our home URL if I wrote that code correctly and let's see it looks like I made some error in my line of code. So let's see, meta, refresh, content, bam. Oh, yeah, here you don't forget to put URL here, okay? And then let's see, I'm gonna click refresh and bam. As you can see, you do login, it automatically redirects our URL to our home, HT, home HTML file, okay? So that is exactly what we want. So, so all our URL patterns are working properly. So now let's work on our front end side. So what I mean by that is, let's actually create a field that deals with username and password. Okay, so open up our code, and then go to views.py. Go to views.py. Um, it is located on the home page. Yep. Okay. And we're actually going to be importing some authentication things here. So, so far we have imported, so this is our default imports previously, and this imports our forms to our views. And then I'm going, I'm basically going to write like a comment here, here, saying auth authentication imports. Let's, let's leave it that way, okay? And then here I'm going to importing a few bunch of things for our authentication. So I'm going to say from Django.contrib.auth import authenticate, comma login, comma logout, and from hello world import settings, and then this is basically importing our my settings.py, and we're actually going to be touching our settings.py later on. And then from Django.contrib. Uh, dot models import user okay and then click save and then that should be it and then let's actually uh, so this imports all the things that are required for our login stuff okay sorry I was drinking water okay now let's go to our settings.py then there's actually a line of code that we must add um, Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna click save here just now on, and then underneath uh, installed apps, I want you to not not in, not in this bracket, but I want you to make some space here, and then I, I just want you to write the following code. 
So with a capital letter, login underscore URL equals login. And then I also wanted to say login redirect URL equals like that. Okay. Then I want you to click save. And then that should be it. So let's just see, hope that everything's working properly and cook and good. Then I'm going to actually migrate everything um, because we actually changed our settings.py a bit. So python manage.py make migrate migrations. Python manage.py migrate. Python manage.py run server. Good. So everything's working properly. Let's see if our admin side is working properly and everything's working properly. Okay, perfect. So uh, all of our backend stuff is uh, properly set up for our authentication. So now all we have to do is create a home, uh, I mean edit our home.html to have like a login uh, box happening, okay? So let's open up our code and then let's go to our home.html file which is located inside our templates folder right here. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Um, this is basically all of our style things. And yes, so that's our form. And that's the stuff that Hello World is doing and stuff like that. I'm actually going to be deleting, deleting these things because we're not using it at all. And I'm going to be making this go a bit smoother, okay? Okay, so here's the thing. We're gonna be using a lot of Jinja, so uh, please follow along. So. Um, basically we have to build an if statement that deals with the case when the user is logged in and an if statement case when the user is not logged in and these two are the cases that are going to be popping up and to use if statement we're actually going to be using Jinja in our HTML file so to do that as I said before this is a Jinja style I'm going to say if request.user is dot is authenticated So if the user is authenticated, what I mean by that is if the user is logged in, I'm going to say h1 welcome and then request.user. So what this does is if the user is logged in, I'm going to be actually display the user's ID here. So this um, mustache format actually finds the user's ID and then substitute this with their user ID when they're logged in. Okay? And then whenever you use an if statement, you need an you need an else statement. And then you actually have to end your if statement uh, by saying end if. Okay? So this is like a typical format for Jinja whenever you use an if statement. You have to have an if statement, an else statement, and then an end if statement. Okay, so now let's see. Uh, okay, so now um, I'm actually also going to have a logout button, and to do that, I'm going to say a href, and then href is basically all the links. And then I'm going to be using a Jinja here URL logout, and then uh, let's see. I'm going to say next home log log out a and that should be it so what this means is I'm going to be creating a button that's going to have this thing called log out button text and then when you click that text it's going to automatically log you out so this is basically me creating a hyperlink of a log out button that logs you out Okay, and the reason why I'm using URL logout is because we actually uh, in our uh, let's see in our URL.py we actually have a set up a logout button right here. So when I, whenever I request a logout button, our Django will basically deal with the whole logout code by itself. It's really convenient. If if we didn't install registration, we're going to actually be actually have to create a separate logout things. So Django is very convenient in terms of creating authentication file, okay? So this is when the users log in, so I created a logout button. So let's make a case when the user's user is not logged in. 
So that's inside this else statement. So when their user is not logged in, they want to be able to log in, correct? So I'm going to create a header saying, welcome, please log in. Okay. And then I am going to, actually, let's, let's see what's happening so far, okay? So I'm going to be, oh, not the Safari. I'm going to open Google Chrome. Let's see what we have so far. And currently, I'm logged in, in a, as a super user. And as you can see, we have a logout button automatically here. So if I log out, and bam, I am logged out, and it automatically shows, please log in side. Please log in text, because that's an else statement right here. And then I'm going to log in using admin side. And if I log in, and then go back to my home, oops, go back to home, it will, sh it will show you my ID, which is JCP, which is my Android ID. Okay, so let's now create a login button and stuff. Okay, so login button is basically like a form, and then it's a method, and then so just follow along. Method equals post, and I hope I spell everything correctly. In action, and then agenda shoot, URL oops, login, and make sure you, so. You can use a double quotation outside if you want. It do really doesn't matter. So just make sure that you are sticking to one style. Actually, because I'm sticking to one style, I'm going to make this double quotation. I'm going to make this a single quotation here because I was using the same method here. Okay, so double quotation outside and single quotation inside. Then let's see what we have. Okay, then uh, yes. Okay, so I'm going to say. Input type equals text and name equals username and placeholder equals. And actually, you don't have to put placeholder, but if you want to, you, you can. So I'm going to say, please type your username. Okay. And I'm going to say input type equals password. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. And the reason why I say password is because if, if I do it this way, it will actually hide your password instead of displaying your password. So this displays your username when you're typing it, but this but this password thing will actually type it like this. Okay? It's kind of a secure way, just like how the password system works. I'm going to say name equals password, and then placeholder equals password. Freeze. Oh, please. Okay. And then I'm going to say button type equals submit. And then I'm going to say login button. And then I'm going to close this form. And assuming that I did everything correctly, this should be working, except I'll show you later on our post button is actually not going to work properly. I'm going to refresh this and I'm going to log myself out and bam as you can see now we have this cool thing here and as you can see our password is actually hidden because um, in our code we actually use a password format here so everything should be working properly except when you press this button it will not work that is because our CSRF verification has failed and what CSRF uh, verification is is it's actually cross-site request forgery. It actually prevents kind of like a malicious attack on websites or email blocks. So if you want to read more about it, you can click this link. But yeah, Django actually has a really easy method of us logging in easily. And, don't, and that is actually by using a Jinja. And we're actually going to just say Jinja here, CSRF token. Bam, and that should work. That should make everything work smoothly. So I'm going to refresh, and then log in, and bam, our login's not working, and our logout's working. Login's working. Logout's working. Login's working. Logout's working. And yeah, that should be it. So that's our login site. Um, as you can see, our, uh, remember our placeholder? That's basically the text that appears here. So password plus is like that <laughs> and actually I'm gonna be you no know, you gotta worry about style you gotta be consistent so I'm gonna click save then now 
username plus, password plus. So that should be working properly. And when you log in, it'll show you your username and log out. And let's so later on, I'm going to be t be using a more actually external registration type so that user so people can sign up for your website. But for right for now, for you to register more users, you can set up like you know user name user Bob, and then, and then write like a random password here. So by doing this, I have created a name username called user called user Bob. And what that means is I can actually log myself as now user Bob. And I can log myself in as user Bob. There. So that's it. Um, that's all of our authentication so far. So um, your homework uh, for next week, I'm actually not going to make this due by Tuesday, but for next week it's just to follow this along and show me that your authentication is working. And please, when you submit your homework, uh, create a super super user with a username called JCP, and then password, and make it like that. Okay. So please, when you're submitting your homework, make your username JCP and password ASAF1234, so that it's easier for me to uh, log in to your Django application instead of me having to go through every single one and creating your super user myself. Okay. So that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next class.